It's Friday, November 5th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And on the news, you've probably seen the skydiving video gone horribly wrong. This incident actually occurred last year, October 14th of 2020 in South Africa. Let's get into this video, break it down, and we will also go over the report from the pilot as to what happened here. Green light, open the door. Six meat missiles climbing out on the left side of the aircraft. Full flaps. Slowing to drop speed. Nose pitches up. And they're off to the rodeo. One turn, one and a half turns. Recover. Stall, quarter turn, recover. Stall, quarter turn, recover, spit one more out. The aircraft was recovered safely without any damage. Now let's read this pilot report as captured on the Reddit bulletin board. This is what the pilot apparently gave investigators after the incident. The aircraft was inspected and is undamaged. The jump run procedure entails setting flaps 60 to 80, that's about full flaps, and bringing back the left engine to flight idle. Red flag to me. How many of you guys do this in the King Air skydiving world using asymmetric thrust on a skydiving run? What are the two ingredients of a spin? Stall and yaw. You're just asking for it using this procedure. Check this out. We also bring the left prop back to full course to minimize disking of the prop. I think he's trying to say the wind blast, reduce the wind blast from the prop. Bring me a bucket of prop wash. This is to enable the jumpers to egress onto the outside step, which would otherwise be difficult due to the prop and thrust blast from the left engine. There's also the added danger of blast pushing jumpers into the left elevator. Power is kept on the right engine to maintain altitude. Why do you got to maintain altitude during the jump run, which typically takes 60 seconds? A fair amount of right rudder is required to fly a straight line in this configuration. There's your yaw. And the pilots to main 95 to 90 knots indicated airspeed. The stall speed on a King Air in this configuration is a, somewhere between 80 to 85 knots. Very close to stall speed with a lot of yaw. You, it sure seems to me that the better procedure would be to bring the power back to about 400 on the torque or just bring the power back, keep the props at a cruise RPM setting, about 1,800 or so, and then slow the aircraft up to the desired drop speed of about 90 to 95 knots and accept a little rate of descent. Get up slightly above your drop altitude and ex accept a steady rate of descent with your engines at a symmetrical power setting. What do you guys do out there in the field? The stall and subsequent spin happened when we allowed too many jumpers on the outside step, causing an aft center of gravity and excessive blocking of the airflow to the left horizontal stabilizer. And you can see that when the nose of the aircraft pitches up. The nose then pitched up beyond the controllability of the elevator. He, I think the pilot hit full elevator nose down and when it was unable to stop the aircraft. Remember, when you go for an aft CG, though it decreases your stall speed, it increases your pitch instability. That is to say that it makes it easier to enter a stall with an aft CG, even though the indicated stall speed is actually lower with an aft CG. I anticipated the stall when I hit the elevator stop. Bam. As the wing came over, I moved the right engine power and prop levers back to the flight idle position. Good move. Thereby neutralizing the engine effect from both engines. Centralized the ailerons and applied full right rudder. Rudder was already in quite deep at this point. Imagine that. We'll go back and look at that video and see about those ailerons. The aircraft behaved very well and the recovery was surprisingly easy. I pulled out as gently as possible as I did not want to stress the airframe. There was some additional instability when I pulled out of the dive. I counted a total of three stalls in that sequence, which is very easy to do. 
recovering from a stall spin scenario, especially in a panic situation, it's very easy to re-enter the stall spin. There was some initial instability when I pulled out of the dive and pushed the throttles forward to power up as one of the engines spooled up quicker than the other and caused another asymmetric moment. And that that's true on a twin-engine aircraft. One will often spool up quicker than the other. The flaps may have inadvertently helped to keep the airspeed low. The indicated airspeed showed 140 knots when I pulled up. What's your flap limit speed, full flaps on the King Air? The incident was reported to the CAA within 24 hours. They investigated and included visiting our hangar, and they seemed happy that the aircraft was operated and flown within its STC, its supplemental type certificate. In the future, <laughs> no more than five jumpers will be allowed on the outside step. We will also brief the big formations to be wary of a pitch moment of the nose of the aircraft so they can let go should this ever happen. This will also be placarded inside the aircraft and included in our King Air briefing for new jumpers. I'm sharing the above information because skydive ops is very difficult for, from normal operations and leave people wondering why we fly certain configurations during a climb, jump run, and descent. The aircraft landed safely with the skydivers that did not exit. Uh, he did land with four skydivers. But I think he's missing the point completely with the use of this asymmetric thrust. That's the procedure that, to me, should be changed. Now let's go back and break down this video a bit more. Apparently six skydivers out on the step. Full flaps are set. 16,000 feet above a cloud deck. That's, you really shouldn't be skydiving into clouds. IMC skydiving is... Okay, and then the nose immediately pitches up as the elevator is being blocked by the skydivers, plus coupled with the AFCG. And this is going to just immediately lead to a stall and a spin boom off he goes and right about let's see let's bring it around to about recover he's still got a lot of right aileron it looks like he's pretty well beginning to recover from the spin but he's got a lot of aileron even though the flaps are down he's got a lot of anti-spin aileron in into the the aircraft in this configuration and this is the natural human instinct when you uh accidentally spin an aircraft you are going to your natural reaction is try to right the aircraft with the ailerons which is exactly the wrong thing to do you're just exacerbating the spin with aileron input during an emergency spin recovery you want to keep the ailerons neutral and use the rudder to recover from the spin and of course with the engines at idle this Beach King Air, like most twin-engine aircraft, is not certified for spins. You do not want to be doing spins in these light and medium-sized twin-engine aircraft because of the configuration of having the engines out there on the wing. It's a lot of mass out there on the wing, and once that thing starts spinning, if you get it past a couple of turns here, that spin will begin to flatten out. The nose will come up, and the aircraft will continue to spin, and you may get yourself into a point where you do not have enough forward elevator authority to get the nose down low enough to break this flat spin and recover. That's why most of these skydive operators, the pilots themselves, are also wearing a parachute. So uh, all that aileron input ends up leading to a secondary. Plus, I see the elevator is still full nose up, it looks like, at this point. It's... You, you want to start recovering from the dive, but you got to get some speed up first before you do it. And again, an aircraft can stall at any attitude and any airspeed. So you, it, but it can only stall at one critical angle of attack. And you'll keep hitting that critical angle of attack on your recovery here if you keep trying to horse it out of there before you allow the airspeed to increase enough to get away from the critical angle of attack. Okay, recover, and one more snap and spin entry, but he gets this one recovered really quick before the last skydiver, well, not the last skydiver, but one more skydiver jumps out, four remained in the aircraft and landed uneventfully. Boom. Another factor to consider when you're operating in asymmetric thrust conditions is VMC or VMCA, the minimum controllable airspeed of the aircraft on one engine. Now, VMCA uh, is defined as having the one engine at full power and the other engine feathered. 
how, which was not the case in this case. However, they were operating in an asymmetric thrust condition. And when you move the CG aft by, with the skydivers, you are increasing VMCA. In other words, you will lose control. You will lose directional control of the aircraft on one engine at a higher indicated airspeed with an aft CG. And that's kind of explained in this diagram here. As you move the CG aft, you simply have less of a lever for much your rudder to act upon to counteract the asymmetric thrust from the engines. Here's some rough numbers on the King Air from a King Air flash card. Stall speeds, these numbers do vary. 88 knots clean, 83 knots in the approach configuration, 78 knots full flap. In the landing configuration with flaps and gear down, again, 78 knots for the stall speed. Best angle of climb speed on two engines, 102 knots. Let's get down here to uh, flap operating range, 76 to 137 knots. Minimum intentional one engine operating speed, 97 knots. Remember, you want to drop these guys at about 90 knots. Best angle of climb on one engine, 99 knots. Best rate of climb on one engine, 110 knots. That's your blue line. So pulling the power on one engine in a skydiving operation is just looks like a recipe for disaster. So let me know in the comment section below, you guys that are operating skydivers, King Airs on skydiving operations. These operations here in the States are generally operated under Part 91, and they are under some increased scrutiny from the NTSB and sometimes the FAA, as they do seem to have a fair, a little bit higher number of accidents than other forms of aviation. And using techniques like this, I can see why. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially on over on Patreon that make this content possible. We'll see you here. Recover. Recover. Spin the aircraft as you did in erect spins. How about this blast from the past, boys? You are in an inverted spin. The mighty tweet. If power is on, close the throttles. Determine the direction of rotation. My first Air Force assignment. Apply opposite rudder and hold it until it takes effect. Rotation rate will decrease and buffeting will be felt just as in an erect spin. When this occurs, hold the stick sharply against the backstop. When the nose pitches down toward a vertical attitude, Ease off slightly on the stick. As recovery is effected, release back pressure as necessary to avoid a high-speed stall and recover from the ensuing dive. Spins can be prevented if you keep in mind how they might occur. But Did you ever do that, the advanced spin training in the T-37, inverted spins? Woo-wee. Spin like a top.